there folks, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could be here because today it is my pleasure to introduce a very special guest to the show. Before I do though, I wanna say that I just absolutely love when a sausage maker can take regional ingredients and turn it into amazing charcuterie. And that's exactly what Greg over at the YouTube channel, Gourmet Woodsman is gonna be doing for us today. Take it away, Greg. Welcome to Celebrate Sausage. My name's Greg, my channel's The Gourmet Woodsman. I'm really happy to be here. I want to celebrate the great Pacific Northwest by showing you how I made these fermented, cold smoked elk truffle salami snack sticks. Let's do this. This is a piece of elk. Just gotta get rid of this silver skin because that's not gonna be a very pleasant texture in our snack stick. Just kind of keeping my knife tilted upwards, trying to get just under that skin. That's looking pretty well trimmed to me. So I'm just going to keep cutting these into pieces that will fit into my grinder. I have a pretty large grinder. Just cut what will fit into yours easily because you don't want to cause friction. What I have here is a piece of rump roast from a Roosevelt elk. The Roosevelt elk is the largest subspecies of elk in North America. And it only lives in the Pacific Northwest. And more specifically, it only lives west of the Cascade Mountain Range. So from Northern California to Southern Alaska and only west of the Cascade Mountain Range. For me, this celebrates my part of the Pacific Northwest. Now I'm going to cut up my back fat. This back fat comes from Boy Blackie the pig. Boy Blackie is a red wattle, big black mix. I also have some videos using brownie. So I always cut my back fat down a little more than my meat because it's just a little tougher on the grinder. I want to make sure it doesn't smear. Okay, my elk and back fat. 70% elk, 30% back fat, going into the freezer while I get the rest of my stuff together. Oregon raised truffle. Don't think that's gonna be the best way to add truffle. Today I'm using truffle salt. Oregon has a really booming truffle industry. In recent decades, we found that, uh, we found that truffles go really well with the hazelnuts, which grow really well here. And if you don't have truffle salt, just use 2.5% kosher salt, you'll be golden. Since it is a cured sausage, I'm gonna use some cure number one because it's gonna cure very fast, less than a month for sure. So I'm going in with my cure number one. I'm gonna add some dextrose to feed that starter culture that we're about to make up. I'm gonna use some white pepper. Use black pepper if you want it a little less, a little less heat. I'm gonna add some onion powder and add some rosemary. Add a little bit of thyme. Okay, I'm gonna add some juniper, but I'm gonna have to grind this up. We'll make some starter culture and grind some meat. Today I'm gonna use Flavor of Italy. It's a pretty fast acidifier. I'm gonna take about a quarter teaspoon, add about a quarter cup of water, mix that together, let that dissolve. I like to mix this up 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour before I use it. Next thing, let's grind up some meat. My meat has been chilling. It's 29 degrees right now. Now I want to send this elk through this twice. So I'm going to run the fat through first. Oh, look at that. That's so beautiful. I love that. That's what happens when you grind it nice and cold. Okay, this is still pretty cold, just over 30 degrees. Now I'm going to add my salt, cure, and spices. I'm going to add my starter culture, and I'm going to mix. It's actually coming together pretty quickly. It's been a while since I worked with elk, but it is a little bit uh, not quite as tight as the beef. Oh yeah, and this fat is going to be totally very defined in this. This is going to be delicious. I'm pretty excited about this, i got to say. All right, we're looking pretty good. It's lifting that whole bowl up, sticking to my hand really well. You can get a look here. You can see how it gets strands that reach out. gets a little, I always say it looks a little furry. That's how I think of it. Um, I'm calling that good. I think that's going to be awesome. I'm going to be using 22, 24 sheep casings. I'm going to keep this wet because I want these to keep sliding back and forth very easily. So what I try to do is find the opening, try to let a little water in there. And that helps lubricate the horn as it goes on. And I usually just start on one side, wrap it around, and uh, 
There it is. They're nice and pliable. I got them going last night, and it's now the next afternoon, so they've had plenty of time, and we are just about ready to go. Let's see. It looks like about three. That's how I'm going to do this. Like, make a little knot. Oh, keep on going. Make sure that this stays slippery. Those are a little too long, huh? See, what if I go like this? Those are kind of too short. All right, got my piece but left in the hopper and I'm just gonna wrap it up. And that's the one I'll use to test my pH. And I'm just gonna go around with my pricker and make sure these all have a few holes in them. Especially if I see any air pockets, like this one. So this should keep the uh, humidity a good 90% or even probably closer to 100. I'll try to keep this around 85, 90 degrees. Flavor of Italy does like it a little warm. Strangely enough, the Flavor of Italy starter doesn't say anywhere on here what organisms are in there, but it also doesn't say what temperature it likes to be at, what temperature and humidity. I happen to know that uh, it likes to be around 85 or 90, even 95, because I have fermented in my oven with the light on, which is between 90 and 95 degrees, basically. And it does its thing quite fast at those temperatures. Well, let's see, it's been about 14 hours. See, it's definitely changed some color. It's definitely firmed up quite a bit. All right, it's looking pretty good. You see that? I'm right at about five, just over five. I think that's where I want to go to. I think I'm going to start smoking these. Before I start cold smoking these and drying them, I'm gonna weigh them. I'll just jot down this weight and the target weight and start cold smoking. So I've got these snack sticks hanging in my older smoker, the one that the bear knocked over. You can see it uh, messed up my thermometer, which doesn't matter for this cold smoking. I've got a smoke generator. Smoke generator just with the, the tube shoved through the intake. It's just an aquarium pump, pushes air through it. It's enough air to keep it going. And as you can see, it does make some smoke in here. But the other thing the bear did, tweaked my door and it just won't close all the way. So I think I'll put a ratchet strap on that. Here's my temporary solution. All right, this is my drying chamber. Let's see what they look like. It's been 22 days since I put these in here and it's 55 degrees and about 80% humidity in here. And uh, these have lost 39% of their weight. So let's go taste them. All right, it's finally time. Time to taste these. Before I do, let's get a good close look. That's kind of what I was going for by only grinding the fat once. I really wanted it to be defined. That said, there's a lot of it and it's a little close to the uh, casing. Mm. Thing is, when you get these big pieces of fat, they're just so creamy. It's like melting over your tongue with truffle. Most truffle recipes are in cream or cheese or butter, something really fatty without a lot of other flavors. <laughs> like melts with truffle. And then you kind of get hit with the, the tanginess from the ferment, a little bit of the smoke from the cold smoke. And you know, with such a narrow diameter, I think you could probably dry this anywhere that stays 50 to 60 degrees and 70 to 80 ish in humidity. Even maybe a little drier would be okay because it's so narrow doesn't really have time to uh, develop a dry ring, cause a problem. That said, I don't know for sure, because I have that cabinet and that's what I use. Man, oh, sun's coming out, hitting a weird angle on my face. That's really a winner. Definitely would make that again. Just make sure your truffle salt is nothing but salt and truffle. And uh, if you don't like truffle, this is actually a good recipe without it. I've made it before with just kosher salt. That said, the truffle salt really elevates this a lot, but uh, but it's a really good snack stick without it. Check out my channel at Gourmet Woodsman. I've got a couple other versions of these snack sticks as well as many other projects. Put some love into your food. Peace. I love it. Sign me up. Those snack sticks look amazing. 
I've already got the truffles. Now I just got to figure out how to get my hands on some of that elk and we are in business. Thank you, Gourmet Woodsman, for an excellent video recipe. And folks, I'm going to put a link to Greg's YouTube channel, The Gourmet Woodsman, in the description box below. And let me tell you a little something about Greg's channel. He has a fairly young, fairly new channel, but he is popping out some expert level content and he is just getting started. I can't wait to see the kind of content he produces in the near future. So go check out Greg's channel, The Gourmet Woodsman. Lots of cool videos, sausage related, salami related recipes, tips and tricks, a little bit of something for everyone. Be sure to subscribe while you're there and let them know that you guys in a cooler channel sent you. I'm going to put a link to Greg's recipe in the description box below if you want to check it out. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a great big thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, especially if you like sausage or sausage related content. Be sure to stick around because in tomorrow's episode, we're making a Northern Italian sausage whose original recipe had an ingredient that most people would have a problem with. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.